Hey guys. Hello. Thanks for clicking on this video. So we really wanted to take some time today to talk about our plans for Jesse's schooling in the fall. Yeah. Not an easy decision, as everyone knows, with everything going on. Yeah, it's definitely a tough decision for everyone to be making, and there are a lot of pros and cons to consider, especially when you're talking about a kid with special needs. considering a few different options. Right now, Jesse is going to a private school for children with autism. The other option was to homeschool, which we actually considered and we've talked about. Yeah. Um, but first we wanted to see what his school was actually putting out for their intent for the fall. And I know we're at the end of July and right now is when most schools are actually coming out with what their intentions are for fall. And most of them are plans with the, if this happens, then we'll do this, depending on how bad it is, we might change to this. And so, I mean, there's just too many unknowns to have a definite plan for fall. But I think it's good to have some intentions and some well thought out plans to figure out what is best for your family. Obviously, there are many choices out there as to, and difficult choices as to what to decide to do. Um, this is what our family is deciding to do. And um, each family needs to make the decision as to what they think is best for their family and education wise. Um, and health wise. And health wise, <laughs> definitely health wise. Major factor in all this. Um, and it's not an easy one. No, um, I read, I've read a lot of articles in the news and on the internet um, about what answer is right or wrong. And so far, what everyone is saying is there's no right answer. There isn't. So there, there's no right answer here. You just have to do with what you believe is best for your family. And there's no one size fits all answer for anyone no. with special needs or not. So with Jesse, Jesse is getting ready to go into seventh grade. His school sent out an email saying because they serve a large variety of students, they have what they believe is the best possible solution, which includes if you are uncomfortable with your child going back to school, notify them immediately and they will set up a social distancing education system where the children can learn at home. But they do have a limited number of spots. So if you do want to do that, you intend on doing that, you need to let them know right away. If you do do that, you may not have the option of physically coming back to school this academic year. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're throwing that out there to begin with. If anybody's uncomfortable coming back, you don't have to come back this year. That's okay. They believe a majority of the students will be attending class in person. And what they are doing is basically a normal schedule. There's no half the kids of this day, half the kids that day. It is the kids go five days a week as a normal schedule, normal hours. Um, they they will not be requiring masks because of the nature of the students. With the majority of the students having autism, they don't believe that masks are something that they can, can or should require. If you want your child to wear a mask or if your child's willing to wear a mask, that's perfectly fine, but it's not required. And as far as teachers go, they're going to allow the teachers to wear a mask but only if it doesn't interfere with educational process. Some of the students have um, difficulties in other ways. So having a mask would interfere with how they learn. And if that's interfering with the way the student's learning, the teachers aren't gonna be required to wear a mask. Yeah. Um, 
my understanding, maybe I'm wrong. I think the teachers are supposed to wear masks. Just they're not required to wear them in the classroom. Maybe I don't know. It was a really long email. It was a very long email. Very. <laughs> and they sent out a second follow up email to answer disco additional questions that there were a lot of questions in. floating around as yeah. to what all it meant. Yeah. So. <laughs> Because of the nature of the students, they weren't going to require anything like that. So we also had Olivia enrolled in preschool this year. However, we received an email from them saying that because of the Ohio laws changing to one teacher per nine students, they were not going to be able to allow all the students in the classroom. And Olivia would, did not make the cut. Yeah. So she no longer had a preschool and luckily I was on the computer when that email came through and I read it immediately and immediately called two other preschools to get on a list. Yes. She was very fast acting in this scenario. I mean, within five minutes, I called two preschools, yeah. less than five minutes. I had her name on a list to go meet with two preschools because it's, it's a tough community out there to get yeah. into preschool. And the, the two preschools <laughs> that Ashley contacted already had a heads up as to what was going on at yeah. Olivia's original preschool. Yeah. Like so, they were anticipating massive phone calls. Yeah. So with that, we no, we actually had the, I called three preschools. We couldn't get her in the one. There was such Did a long wait. Them? Oh yeah. There was a long wait list yeah. on the third one. Yeah. No, that was the first one I called. Oh, for the first one I called had such a long wait list right. we couldn't we weren't even gonna bother. So I just like mm, send me the info, email it over to me. But I moved on to the other two preschools very quickly. We went and viewed them within the two next, days. Yeah. It was two days. It right? was within two days. We viewed those two preschools and made a decision and put down a pot deposit immediately so we could get her into another preschool because it's it's so very competitive yeah. in our area at the moment for I, I feel like it's borderline cutthroat. <laughs> borderline <laughs> cutthroat <laughs> preschools up yeah. here, so. So we considered not having a living. <laughs> Madeline kept hitting the camera, and so I put her over there. She's and now sad. she's mad and sad that she can't get in the video at the moment. So Olivia's decision to be in preschool, we considered we could homeschool her. Um, preschool is not a requirement. However, if we were going to go ahead and <laughs> we were gonna go ahead and put Jesse in school, we didn't see much of a point of keeping Olivia out of school. What Olivia is missing is the socialization so, yeah. factor. It's a lot of attitude from a little puppy. She wants to contribute to the to, <laughs> to this video. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, <laughs> so with Olivia, I mean, she's a smart kid. She learns very quickly, but she's been home with me since November, and she misses being around other kids. And as much as I can teach her at home, I can't replicate the classroom environment. That's the issue. Yeah. She needs to be able to learn in the classroom with the distractions of the other kids and have that socialization and learn things that being around other kids teach her that I can't, I can't teach her at home. Yeah. That's what she's missing. And if we're already having Jesse in school, which we'll get to in a second as soon as Madeline calms down, if we're going to already have Jesse in school and be exposed in that manner, we didn't... <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see much of a point of keeping Olivia out. I will send you to school too. Oh, is that her problem? She's jealous. She wants to go to school too. Do you want to go to school? She's like, well, I do like my friends. Okay. Anyways, back to Jesse, not Madeline. So, with. Not everything's about you. We need to ignore her so she stops. Okay, we took Madeline out for a potty break. Should be good now. So with Jesse, he was our biggest decision factor in what all we were doing for the fall. Olivia 
preschool isn't really as big of a deal as Jesse's seventh grade year. Yeah. So that was our big decision factor. And we had a hard time figuring out what we should do. We made a pro-con list, because I like my pro-con list. She does. I do. It makes it easy to visually see what I'm thinking in my head, and I like that. With Jesse, our biggest decision factors were really, um, can we give him the education he needs at home? Yeah. Whether it be through homeschooling or social distance learning, which we would have preferred social distance learning over just homeschooling because we didn't want to learn, lose his spot in the school. So that was a big factor of homeschooling being a no-no was we couldn't lose his spot in the school. We needed that. Yeah. And then the other factor was that we did not feel with his needs that we could provide the best education at home, what he needed. He needs a full-on dyslexia specialist every day. He needed to understand socialization things that we cannot teach him at home and how to learn in a classroom environment was a huge factor yeah. for us. I mean, these are the reasons that we moved up here to go to this school. These are the reasons that we relocated our entire lives was for this education because we cannot provide what he needs at home. And whether we like it or not, he learns better from a teacher than from his parents. Yeah. yeah. He does. He, he wants to kind of argue back with his parents. And when we say this is like a historical fact, he's like, I oh, know, I'm pretty sure it's this. I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. And it's just, it's easier for him when it's coming from a teacher than his parents. With all of these factors that we've mentioned in other videos as to why we're moving up here, what we're looking for in this education, um, we did a homeschooling video when this whole pandemic started and what we believe was working and not working with yeah. him. I think we did the best that we could. We could, yeah, we did. Yeah. I think, which I mean, probably for everyone, but there towards the end of the school year, he was just, it was done. Ever. Yeah, he was done. Yeah. And I, you know, I figure all kids were to begin with. And even when they're in school, they're done with like a month left. They're clocking out. But to be at home and do it is... It's a whole different level yeah. of being done. Yeah. And he's just, he's not ready for any form of learning at home, social distance learning. It's not going to benefit him even close to any degree that he can learn in the classroom. So our decision is to go ahead and send him to school. And because we're sending him to school, we're going to go ahead and send Olivia to school. Yeah. And that's what we've decided is best for our family. If the numbers get bad and they do do the social distancing, I mean, we'll adapt to that. No problem. I'm perfectly okay. If they need to shut it down, then they need to shut it down. That we're fine with adjusting to that. That doesn't bother me. Yeah. But as of right now, that is our decision and that's what we're going with. So good luck to everyone else who's yes. having to make these horrible and difficult decisions. Just know that everyone feels this way and there is no right answer. But on the plus side, there's also no wrong answer. So whatever you guys decide is best for your family, I'm sure is what's best for your family. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. We will see you in the next video where hopefully Madeline will be a little quieter and cuter in the video. <laughs> and we will see Jesse and Olivia in it too. Bye. Bye. Click on this video. Will you please click on this video? Come on, push it. Can you please subscribe? Can you please push that subscribe button? Or for the other video, you can press this button. Go on. Click this button, or this button, or this button. Well, mostly this button, but these two buttons are